All right, here we are. This is it. The car is coming back together now, finally, right? Uh, so, today my plan is to get put this head back on the engine and have a whole engine again. <laughs> so, uh, so my, the first uh, order of business today is, uh, well, I'm going to install this, this uh, timing belt tensioner before I forget. And then, uh, and then I'm going to start putting the manifolds on to the head. I've already got the water dealie hooked up. I just have to install this, which I cleaned a while ago. And this exhaust manifold that I spray painted last night with the copper spray. And oh yeah, I have to put the turbo in too. So yeah, should uh this should be it. Car's coming back together today. And then uh and then the fun task of uh I'm gonna try to get the head on this, with the studs and all that and then uh and now I'm going to put, try to put the um, timing belt to get today. So we'll see. The, the, I did the balance shaft belt a while ago. So that should be good. And um, yeah, and then uh, start hooking stuff back up. But uh, today, today I'm going to try to get the um, head on there and the timing belt, like I said. And the, and the turbo, obviously. That turbo is probably going to be hooked up to it also. So yep, here as it goes. Make sure uh, my uh, my torque wrenches are ready here. I, got, I bought this uh, quarter nice quarter inch Tecton uh, um, torque wrench a while back, a little bit. Uh, it goes up to 200 inch pounds, so very small stuff. And uh, and then the others, anything over 200 or like uh, 15 and up, I, I trust this one. So. I'm gonna get uh, I'm gonna get my money's worth out of my uh, torque wrenches today. <laughs> Here's my out. Okay, so here's going to be the main tools I'm going to be using today are uh, some 14s, some 12s that are already on there, and uh, oh, I don't have 14s for the little guy though. And the uh, anti-seize compound for the not so hot stuff, and then the copper anti-seize compound for the hot stuff. So yep. So all on the exhaust stuff, I'm gonna put the copper stuff, and then like the intake stuff, I will just use the the aluminum stuff. Like you really should just put that on all your bolts because you don't want them to snap when they come off. But uh, all the ones that have been pretty good on on this engine. So all right. Uh, Time to get it in there. Actually, I gotta go pick up some parts at Winchester Auto right now. They, they got the radiator hoses. Hopefully, they got the right ones this time. All right. So go. as you can see, uh, the the Mitsubishi gasket that comes with the um, 4063s now uh, have this um, steel gasket that goes on there. It's not a little paper gasket anymore. So that'll be better for the for the EGR because the EGR sucks. And I'm pretty sure there's only one way to put it on. It is. It's a pretty quality piece of uh, gasket there. And I'm ready to put the intake manifold on. All the bolts ready. Okay, well, you know, like, like I said, uh, it was a bitch to take this manifold out. But it was a bitch to, re to install it, too. Um, so, uh, I couldn't torque it at all, pretty much. The only ones I was able to torque were these two with the little uh, baby wrench. The rest of them were just like, there's too much stuff in the way, you know? My my half-inch torque wrench won't fit in here, it won't fit in here, it won't fit in there. So, uh, yeah, um, what I had to resort to was uh, I, I torque these ones. I would turn these like two turns, and I would use a, use the wrench, and then I'd remember like how much I turned that one. So I'd turn it like, like two nor normally, two like one-eighths, so like a quarter. And then... Um, and I would move on to the next one. So these ones are torqued, I know for sure. And then the rest, I just snugged them with the wrench. However much I thought, you know, this moved. Well, hopefully that'll work. Uh, I think it should be fine. Um, yeah, Mitsubishi, this is a shitty manifold design. Can't you make it more uh, mechanic friendly, you know? On the other hand, it is a pretty cool manifold. It's uh, It's all one piece, you know. I gotta give it to the... to these manufacturers, dude. They, uh... I don't know how you would make something like this. I'd like to see how they make a manifold like this. Because it's, it's all one piece. 
I've seen a two piece manifold like the, there where they separate, but this is all one piece and I don't know how they get the inside like that and yeah, there'd have to be like some kind of special mold or something. Anyway, so that's the intake manifold, it's on there, finally. Uh no problems. Uh it was kinda hard to, to thread some of them in there. I should have chased the threads first, but uh, I didn't. Um the the block the the exhaust manifold should be okay though. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shift this over to the other side because it's gonna it's gonna fall over the way it is now. It's like right at the edge. And then uh then I'm gonna start installing the exhaust manifold. And I'm pretty sure that one I can torque, so but uh yeah I'm always uh I always get nervous when I'm torquing when I'm like fastening stuff to aluminum because it's just uh you know that feeling you get when I'm like oh shit the threads are coming out and you know and then uh out comes the Healy coil right <laughs> I do have the I think I do have the Healy coils for this for this head though so uh, uh I mean I don't have them with me unfortunately hopefully I won't run into that problem today all right, well there it is. There's half of the manifolds on there. Got to put the other half. Easy make up. There it goes. I got it on there. Uh, I don't know. It was kind of sketchy using the torque wrenches on it. Um, this one seems to be more than this one, but I don't really trust this one at uh, low torque ranges. And this is like a like a ten year old uh, <laughs> uh, torque wrench, so I don't really I don't know which one to trust more. I want to trust this one because I just got it, but it seems like it over torqued the bolts. So I'm not sure. I felt like this one was going to come out or something. But anyway, so I got it. Um, so I found out that this cam is the wrong way. The dowels are supposed to be pointing at 12 o'clock, and it was pointing at 6 o'clock, so I fixed that. So there's actually two marks on these cam gears, if you look at them. Yeah, see there's a red one, and then a black one. And you can easily get them mixed up. Oh, so maybe it was backwards. I think one of them was red and one of them was black when I took the head out, so... One of them was on the wrong side. But uh, anyways, the valves are bent anyways. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's ready to go on. That should be it. So all I have to do is uh, I'm going to resurface this one more time just to get some of the dirt and some of that rust out. Let's put this into the hook up here. Uh, this hood's day. All right. There we go. It's finally going on there. I took the cam gears out so I wouldn't be tempted to like pick them up or anything with them. Because I know they'll get fucked up like that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to run the, the resurfacing disc on this real quick. There is some little bit of corrosion on it so I want to get rid of that before uh, it's just from because from sitting out here exposed to the atmosphere. Uh, and then uh, we'll get the head on there. I'll get my cherry picker out. Uh, I'm gonna, oh no, I don't have the I don't have the little microphone stand thingy to to raise the hood more. Hmm. All right, I'll figure something out. Before I even try to get the head on, I gotta put the turbo down there already, so I don't have to like put it from the bottom because I got the manifold already in there. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot of room to work with in there, so I'd prefer to put the turbo first. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bolt it up to this stuff here. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use the old gasket and put some RTV around it so it looks good. All right, I'm gonna put the turbo on. Just making sure I got all my all my goodies ready. Um, so, 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 so I got my uh, my uh, nuts for the got my pair of nuts here to put my O2 housing back on. Basically, the only thing that's gonna hold it up is the O2 housing, the oil uh, oil drain, and the the coolant hose, and I mean, it seemed fine before. It's not like the turbo got any heavier, you know. Um, maybe a little, but uh, I got the bolt right here, and I got the extra washers here. I got some RTV for the for the oil drain, so I'm all ready to put it on there. So when next we meet, there will be a turbo sitting there, just uh, hanging out. So what's to say? All right, so I go went ahead and uh, sprayed the. Um, the downpipe with some uh, copper gasket sealer 
dealy and uh and I, I gooped up the, the oil drain so it's ready to go. Here it goes. Alright, the turbo's in there. Um so I got everything fastened basically, but I haven't um I haven't done anything yet. Uh, I haven't torqued anything yet, I mean. So uh so I just barely got this in. This was a bitch. I had to like tweak the turbo back that way a little bit. It's a good thing like there's so many flex sections on this. This moves, this moves because it's got hoses and um, this is supposed to be in here apparently. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a good thing the turbo has a lot of flex room. Um, but yeah, this there's not a whole lot of room to work with in here. I just, you know, this engine bay is so big but it doesn't know. Uh, but I think the 2G engine bay is bigger. But anyway, so there there you can see I got the gasket in there. I almost forgot to put it on, the gasket. <laughs> I was like, oh, wait a minute, I'm forgetting something. But anyway, let's go look down here first. So I got the um, the drain bolts in the, for the oil drain. And I got the, the, um, the O2 housing bolts in there. And so just so let me give you a little tip before, before I go away here. Alright, so if you're under here and you're you're kind of in the situation that I'm in, uh, where I'm uh, I have no uh, exhaust manifold and I'm just like dropping the turbo in there, but, but in this in this case there's no head. Um, this tool, this this tool here, it's a it's a, like a screwdriver with a quarter inch tip and an extension. Is makes this job much easier. Muy facile, right? So like that. And then you can just get it from here. Easy, easy. And then you just use that. And then you can, I'm going to torque it later with a wrench. And then, for the O2 housing, this tool makes it easy to screw in. It's like a breaker bar. It's a baby breaker bar. The big one, I'm pretty sure, will not fit under here. It's too long. And you just use it to screw it in like a screwdriver, basically. And then, uh, and yeah, so all I have to do is torque everything down. So, uh, let's hop to it. I like this. This is the part of the, it's the part of the, the work that I enjoy the most. After everything is nicely prepped up, all that work you did is paying off now. All you have to do is, like, just turn wrenches now, basically. And it's actually, it's quite nice. Um, yeah, prep work sucks, man. I, I hate it. So, uh, I haven't cleaned the, the block yet, but... Look, look, there's stuff in there. Yes, I like it. <laughs> look at how much stuff there isn't behind the engine. So what I don't like about... Yeah, let me talk about the um, 4G63. What I don't like about the 4G63 is there's a lot... There's a lot going back here when you don't have... When you doesn't need to be, you know? Um, I think they should move the engine further back. Oh, well, perhaps that's why... I think that might have been why uh, they flipped, flipped the engine around. Is so they can get the engine back there and get a better weight distribution. But as you can see, the um, where's the axles? Yeah, the axles are back here. The axles are back here. So um, so you get your engine in front of the front axles. The car is gonna t have a tendency to understeer now because you got all this weight on the nose. The weight balance is not good. Now of course this is all-wheel drive. So you have extra like 100 or 200 pounds in the back of the car. So that kind of offsets it, but you know, that's besides the point. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's my big gripe about the 4G63. I used to have a, a non-turbo Eclipse RS, and um, and I turboed it. And uh, what I liked about that engine is it, it had good weight balance. Um, the engine was flipped the other way compared to this engine, and they pushed it back. It was, it's pushed back farther. It's like almost, it's really close to the firewall. The, um, the intake manifold is smaller. And uh, so, I mean, there's so much room back here. So much room. It doesn't, you know, it's just taken out by like the drivetrain, the transmission, and, uh, and the intake manifold. And under it, there's not a lot of stuff going on. So uh, it's just, that's my big complaint I don't like about the 4063 design. Because uh, my GST, it understeers, it has more, much more in there a tendency to understeer than uh, than my non-turbo Eclipse. The non-turbo Eclipse handled better. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, I think the GST is better. You know, you can't throw the GST around as much because you got all that that weight in the front.